Minecraft. Huge tracts of land are what we are able to explore as a result of gaining achievements which allow us to expand the world border in Spacebard. It's more Minecraft exploration and tactics. Let's get started. Welcome back to Minecraft Exploration and Tactics Spacebard, where, among other things, I am barred from pressing the spacebar, which means I cannot jump or swim. And I'm also barred in space because there's a world border, but the world border is way out there somewhere now. Because in the previous episode, we unlocked some more achievements. And each time we get more achievements, we expand the world border. But to get things started off today, let's talk about the pens. In the previous episode, I said without jumping, I wanted kind of relatively foolproof practical ways to keep the animals in the pens without me falling in the pens. And there were a variety of suggestions. Um, one of the most popular ones was kind of a two-phase airlock, which is what I've done over here with the pigs, where basically it is mostly the case that they stay down inside the pen. Uh, but if they do manage to climb the ladder, then they're still kind of relatively trapped up here, unless they manage to find their way over to this fence gate, and I happen to leave it open. And so that was a very good idea. And I did something somewhat similar with the cows. Cows are weird. Okay, this cow is climbing. There's a ladder right in front of the fence gate here. Cows have this tendency to... they're very large animals, and when you keep them in an underground pen like that, they have a tendency to glitch through the walls of the pen and uh, end up suffocating in the wall. And so I changed the sides of that pen, as you might have seen, underground. I changed the sides of the pen to be fences. So that if they do start glitching, they'll glitch into fence blocks. And the fence blocks, let's go ahead and not be holding the wheat. Let's hold the wheat over on this side. Hey guys, come see the wheat. I know you'll notice it in a moment. You'll all come running over here. Because that's how you guys work. I've got wheat. Three, two, one. There they go. Now they all notice it. <laughs> we'll feed a couple of them and make a couple more. Make another little cow. Um, yeah, fences basically don't suffocate the cows, and so if they do glitch into the fences, they won't suffocate and die, I hope. Um, and so that's what I did over here. That said, there were a variety of somewhat brilliant suggestions, one of which I wanted to show off as a way to get out of the pen. Uh, and that is if I do this with a minecart, then I should be able to hop out of the pig pen via the minecart. And so we'll actually, we're gonna risk some of the pigs getting out over here. But basically, if I fall down into the pen, and even if I don't have the ladder, I can right click on the minecart, and that pops me into the minecart, and then I can shift and I can pop back out. And so that looks like that is gonna work tremendously well. And so I think what I will do is I will go ahead and leave that one here for the pigs. And if I can, tear down these ladders. Very nice, very nice. And then we'll just use the minecart, and there's no way that the pigs can take advantage of that. Uh, and so that's going to work great. And so that was a good suggestion. A couple of people made that suggestion. There were actually tons and tons of suggestions. There were other suggestions that involved pistons and multiple types of fences that you can, like, if you have a nether brick fence and a normal fence, like, the player can kind of slip through them, but the animals don't really pathfind through them. There were lots of great suggestions, uh, and so I appreciate all the suggestions that people left in terms of good ways to do the pens. Uh, the cow pen I think I'm going to leave like it is right now, uh, just because... <laughs> just because of the fences kind of on the inside to keep them from glitching into the walls. Uh, but for the pig pen, I think that that one's going to be an awesome one, and so we'll use that in the future. All right, so you'll recall at the end of the previous episode that we unlocked some more achievements, and the next few achievements are all ones that we should be able to get. And so that is the first thing I want to do today, and then we will... Am I carrying the map still? Yeah, then, because the world border has expanded so much, I think we will try to explore and fill in at least this whole map uh, will be one of my goals for today. Um, but one of the things that we need to do is go fishing, and I'm certain that I have tons of string in here. All right, I lied. I have very little string in here, but it's enough to make a fishing rod. And so let's go ahead and do that. And now what are the chances that as I try to catch a fish to cook up for the achievement of getting delicious fish, that I will catch something other than a fish, such as a fishing rod or boots or some of the other junk loot that you can get from fishing in Minecraft? 
I don't know what the actual odds are. Ooh, that was a fast fish. Except for was that... What did I get? Did I just get a bow? No, I already had a bow in my inventory. Did the fish fall in the water? I think the fish fell in the water, maybe? What did I just pick up? Is there something down here? I'm so confused. I thought it looked like a salmon. But I don't see salmon in my inventory. Oh my goodness, am I going to have to go back and review the video in order to figure out what I just fished? I think I might. Crazy. I'll be right back. I reviewed the video... And it was a stick. <laughs> what is this? Vex is legendary? I feel so trolled. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different junk loot that you can get, and I think it's relatively rare. Like, I think the probability is greatly in your favor. Hey, wow. There we go. That you'll actually get a fish when you go fishing. With an unenchanted fishing rod, at least. Got some other things left over in here. Um, speaking of sticks, we will use the sticks in order to cook up this delicious fish so we can get that achievement. Um, but yeah, I don't actually know the percentages, and so I thought it would be funny if I happened to not get a fish on my first fishing attempt. And sure enough, it happened. I, it always amuses me when I'm watching people play Minecraft Bingo, and they need to catch a fish, and they end up catching something like an enchanted bow or different kinds of crazy things. All right, but in any case, we got the fish. What were the other things that we need to get? Repopulation. Uh, I got off camera, as you probably could already guess, by virtue of the fact that I was over there breeding the cows and we didn't get that achievement. Basically, while I had some off-camera time, I was fixing up the pens and trying to breed up the cows a bit. And actually, when I was just over here, I have some more wheat and there's probably a few more cows who are ready to breed. And so let's just walk around down here and make sure that all of these cows are very happy. But we've got the repopulation achievement. We've gotten the delicious fish achievements. And what is the other achievement in this column that would be easy to get? I can't remember what it is right now. So let's go take a look at the achievements monument and see what's next on our list of things to do. If I'd been more prepared, I would already know. Oh, it's the cake, isn't it? It's the cake. <laughs> yep, it's the cake. All right, and we have, do I have all the ingredients to bake a cake? I think it's milk, milk, milk. Wheat, 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 sugar, egg, sugar. Yes, I own all of these ingredients. The sun is about to go down. I'm going to get these ingredients together. And we will bake a cake and get another achievement and be able to expand the world border once again. Woohoo! There are a number of recipes that I don't know that I would normally know or remember, except for the fact that they're useful for Minecraft Bingo. Uh, but as a result, cake is sometimes one of the items that appears in a bingo card, and so I know the recipe for it. There it is! Achievement get! The lie! And now you actually get to keep the buckets, which is great. I actually hold on to them in my inventory. And we've made a cake! And let's see... I think... I will put the cake right here, and I can eat the cake in bed. <laughs> How decadent! Woohoo! Alright, as a result, we now have another row of achievements. The world border is currently at 640 blocks. And so we'll be doubling it to 1,280 blocks, and that'll give us tons of room to explore. We'll be able to find some new biomes. Maybe I'll find a jungle so I can get the jungle wood trees that I really want to get so that I can finish off my roof with the type of wood that I would like to use. But let's go ahead and knock these three achievements off of the list. Uh, once again, just to verify, achievements. Cake the lie, taken. Repopulation, taken. I took it off camera. And finally, delicious fish. Catch and cook fish. Awesome. And so, world border set 1280 from 640. We have doubled the world border once again. And the next thing is to get uh, a saddle we'll have to find in a dungeon somewhere. But that would be really useful both for the, both for the horses that we've seen Let's see, Librarian we should be able to get pretty soon, and Diamonds to you. We'd have to throw diamonds at a zombie, but I don't actually have any extra diamonds because I only found five, and we turned three into a diamond pick and the other two into the enchanting table, so we'll need to find more diamonds for that. So yeah, it'll probably be a little bit while, a little bit of time before we're able to expand at the world border once again. Uh, but I'm going to get some adventuring inventory, and we are going to go try to fill out a whole lot of this map now that the world border is so far out. 
To go ahead and preempt the question that I'm sure some people are asking to themselves, I have an enchanted enchanting table now already, but I haven't actually enchanted anything. I'm hoping to save up my levels for a little while longer until I have enough cows that I can actually build enough bookshelves to get a level 30 enchant that I can put on the diamond pick and different things. And so that's kind of my strategy right now. That's the reason I haven't enchanted anything yet. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could put some level one enchants on iron tools, for example. Uh, but for the most part right now, we're just going to do some adventuring in the overworld. So I don't know that I necessarily, I'm in desperate need of any enchanting. But instead, let's try to find out what biomes are available in this world and see what we can find. And so basically, I'm going to go down to the bottom of this map and then hang a left. Obviously, we've got some savanna and some desert over here. And I also brought, and I actually see some sheep across the way over here. I can kind of circle around, actually. No, I can't circle around over here. I'll circle around over here. I brought some shears so that I could shear some sheep. It's a long way around when you can't when you can't jump or swim. I never thought about this actually. I guess I'll build a bridge because yeah, if I can't swim and this is a river, it might be a long river and it might be a long way to go before I can actually find a place to get across the river. And so I'm actually going to do this. Since it'll be cheaper to do things with half slabs, we'll make a bunch more slabs. We'll go ahead and turn this into sticks just to kind of preserve inventory space. And we'll make some slabs across the river. Uh, and then I'm going to go shear some sheep so that we can make another bed as we're out adventuring. So that we can just try to cover as much of the overworld as we can, possibly over the next two or three in-game Minecraft days. Uh, but let's go ahead and... Shear this guy. I'm discovering that I go through slabs very quickly when I'm out adventuring in the world. But we are making a little bit of progress on the map. I've made my left turn. We're continuing on. We have opened up a fair amount of swampland at this point, and so if I did stick around at night, I would be able to kill some slimes in the surface, and that would be another way that I could get some sticky pistons. So that's something to think about. Here's a flower forest that's edging up on some extreme hills. And we've kind of reached the corner of this map, so I guess I'll make another left-hand turn. And actually, the sun's about to go down. And so I think the flower forest is a beautiful place for us to go ahead and quickly spend the night. And so I will make a bed to sleep away the night and actually sheared another sheep along the way so that we can actually leave this bed here and just continue on along in the morning. I gathered some snow and snowballs from up here on top of this mountain, just in case I want to make a snow golem at some point. Although I can't remember if I've found any pumpkins yet, so I should definitely keep my eye out for those. Got a roofed forest over here. I'm up a pretty tall mountain over here. Gonna try to get a spruce sapling and then continue heading this way. Yeah, we should be able to fill up this whole map in the next two Minecraft days. Yeah, it's another group of brown and brown with white spot horses. And so I actually just want to kind of make a note of where I am on the map right now to try to remember that for the future, where to find these guys. I'll be back, guys. Eventually I'll have a saddle and try to ride some of you guys. That'll be super useful. I think we talked about that in the previous episode uh, from the point of view of, hey, pumpkins! Having horses means that I'll be able to get up. You know, little one high steps of the train, uh, and I guess possibly even like two or three. I guess I still can't jump. I can't press the jump button on the horse either. Um, but I'll be able to get up across some of the terrain um, without having to put slabs everywhere. And so that'll be very useful. Uh, I'm about to get lost. I need to go a little bit more this way. Ooh, careful. I hear things. There is a skelly. There is, oh my goodness, an armored zombie. Hello, buddy. It seems like you're a natural spawn as opposed to being out of a spawner. If there was a spawner, I would definitely be interested. Otherwise, for right now, I'm just happy to 
continue the overworld exploration. Because the spawner might have a saddle. But let's try to get far enough over into this corner that we can get the very corner of this mapped out on the map. We did. Okay, great. And I will once again turn back this way and see if there's any other interesting things along the way home. But I've already managed to pick up pumpkins, cactus, spruce saplings, and snow. And so we have a few items that we didn't have previously near our spawn point. So we're making some progress in terms of collecting loot. And I made it back home without even having to use a second bed. That trip was good just to give me some confidence that if I have enough wood along for slabs, it's not that difficult to travel through the overworld, despite not being able to jump. Admittedly, most of the terrain that I was traveling on was quite flat. There was one corner of the map uh, that had some extreme hills over on kind of the right-hand middle portion of the map. But apart from that, it was relatively flat terrain. It was reasonably easy going, and I think I started out with an entire stack of wood. I did go through half a stack, although I do have a bunch more slabs that I haven't used yet. Um, but I did go through a fair amount of wood, and so, I don't know, maybe 16 blocks of wood or something for a day's traveling using half slabs lots of different places might be a good quick estimate uh, for if I'm doing more long distance travel in the future, but that was useful. Ah, good morning to me. Cake, the breakfast of champions. Om nom 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 nom. I've made another empty map. The next thing I would like to do is do a little bit of science on maps. So I think what I had heard is basically they made it so the maps kind of snap to a grid. And so if you have zoomed out maps, they'll kind of line up next to each other on a map wall. However, I would have expected, uh, if that's what they did, that it would be the case that zero, zero, which is where I'm standing right at the base of this ladder over here, would have either been at the very corner of a map or in the very center of a map. And instead, it's kind of up in this close to the corner, but not quite there state. And so what I want to do is go over in this direction and make another map at the same zoom level. I pressed F3H, which gives you more information in the hover tooltips in your inventory. As this shows, scaling at 1 to 4, it's basically a twice zoomed out map. And so what we're going to do is we're going to head over in this direction where we've explored a tiny bit this way before. Yeah, you can see some slabs over here, but the world border used to be just over here, and now we'll be able to travel a whole lot farther. Um, but basically, go off the edge of this map, which we're already starting to do, and once I get, I don't know, a little ways far enough that I'm certain that I'll be in the next map over, I want to try crafting or creating my new map and then zooming it out. Anything exciting looking down there? Not really and see if it seems to kind of like snap to the grid so that it'll line up next to this one on a map wall. All right, so now I'm definitely off of the map over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a new empty map. We'll open it up right here and get the non-zoomed in version. And then, did I not bring a crafting table? I didn't bring a crafting table. All right, uh, I will use some spruce, sure. Then we will take this map and we will zoom it out one level. And now it says scaling at one to two. Whoa, there was like a weird graphical glitch before I kind of like looked down into my, into my hand at the map I thought I saw there. And we'll zoom it out one more level, like so. Yeah, did you see that? It was like all kinds of colors uh, before I then picked it up and looked in my inventory. That was kind of weird looking. And so, yeah, I think maybe this is going to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk along the border here, and then we're going to look at these two maps. We could put them on item, oh, item frames. I need leather for that. Well, I'm starting a cow farm. Uh, I would really like to use the leather for enchanting table kind of stuff, but if we have to do a couple pieces of leather in item frames so that we can do some science on maps, then that's what we need to do, because science has always been a part of exploration and tactics. I like learning about new game mechanics and game physics and while there's a lot of things you could just go and look up on the wiki it's always more fun for me to just do it myself um we are kind of in a dark and scary place over here might encounter some mobs in the surface but i'm gonna at least walk all the way down to the edge of this map uh, and then we'll bring these home get some item frames put these two maps together on the wall and see how things look 
According to the map, it looks like there's a lava pool over here, and I actually have some extra buckets in my inventory. There's the lava pool. Yeah, and so I'm going to go ahead and fill up these buckets. Just because lava buckets could be handy to have, especially for smelting. Just because a lava bucket can smelt... I forget, is it 100 items? I think it's 100 items, uh, which is pretty nice. And let's go ahead and get the lava bucket off of the bar. Which of these maps? I think it's this one. Oops. Ah, inventory. Not in the correct spots. There we go. This is an interesting formation here in the desert. It's almost like a little crater. It almost looks like it was a meteorite impact from long ago or something. It definitely feels like fording rivers is where I end up spending most of my blocks when I'm just exploring new territory in the overworld. So I have to try to keep that in mind. Back home, it turns out that I did already have one piece of leather. But let's actually do some manual farming. For the most part, uh, I don't mind manually growing little farms. I find it doesn't take very long to get to where you have a good supply of things like wheat and carrots for all the breeding that you need to do. But eventually, at some point later in the series, we may end up doing some automated farms uh, because they are always fun. Uh, but let's breed up some more cows. And now that we have a fair number of cows here, let's try to kill at least one more to get a piece of leather because I need two pieces of leather for two item frames. Hey guys, let's kill the big cows, not the little cows. Still no leather. I need some leather! Give me your hide. How about you? You're running around. There we go. There's some leather. Hooray. And it looks like the sun is going down again. I'm going to sleep back home here for the night. And we will examine these maps in item frames. And it was so delicious. Yesterday morning, I'm going to do it again. Picking out on cake in the morning. Ah... <laughs> uh. That's what the Hungry Adventurer Explorer gets. All right, so let's put some item frames up like this. And then let's try, I guess, putting this map here and this map here. Yes, they do fit together automatically. Okay, and that's despite the fact that I like crafted one over here and crafted one over here or something. Uh, and so they do snap to a grid. It's just kind of a weird grid that they snap to because I really thought that zero zero would be on the corner uh, of some of these maps. All right, but that's how it works. So that's actually kind of nice. And I think at this size, it could be nice to make a map wall. Uh, it would take a bunch of different maps in order to make a map wall of all the area that we've already encountered because if these are just at currently... Oh no, map, come back. Um, what size map is this? I think this is only like 512 by 512. Does it show me on the tooltip? It just says 1 to 4. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they start out at 128. And so 4 times that would be the 512. And so if that's 512 blocks across, and the world border is currently at uh, 1280, and that's in two different directions, so it's effectively like 2400 across. Yeah, that would make like a nice like 4x4, four 5x5 four, five five map wall. I don't know that it's something I'm going to spend a ton of time on over the next few episodes, but slowly over time, hopefully we'll kind of accumulate a nice map of the area, because I always think that that's a fun thing to do in Minecraft, now that they have these seamless maps spanning across item frames that I think look really good now. This was somewhat amusing and unexpected. I came back to the Achievement Monument, and we've ungotten delicious fish. Uh, what happened, obviously, is the vine started growing down and recovering that, and so I suppose, can we put torches? Uh, what else could I place on here that wouldn't obscure my view of everything, but keep the vines from going down from the other achievement up there? Um, if I had some string, I could place a piece of string, kind of like trip wire there. I think that would work. So let me go get a piece of string just to prevent the vines from growing down. String, as you probably know, you can set down on the ground as trip wire uh, and hook it up to various redstone traps and mechanisms and different things. Uh, but you can place it against most blocks and in the air. 
And so it's not particularly visible unless you're looking directly at it and your kind of like selection box kind of highlights it. Uh, but just from a distance, yeah, I don't even know if you can see the string in front of the glowstone from right there. If I get up closer, I can definitely see it. And since that air block is now filled with the tripwire string, the vines ought not be able to grow back down. And so that should help prevent that from happening again. Um, while we would be able to make some bookshelves after we breed up some more cows and get some more leather for books, uh, both getting a saddle as well as more diamonds will probably require some more caving, and that's something that I always enjoy doing. Obviously, we have a whole lot more world to explore that we can go caving in, and so perhaps that's what I'll do next. Let's see where we are in the episode. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. It looks like we're already through today's episode, but we did actually make a bunch of progress. Obviously, we got more achievements, which allowed us to expand the world border again. We did some exploring around the world in order to collect uh, various things, such as some spruce saplings and some cactus and some pumpkins. I've got some farms that I just set up over here. And yeah, we'll be in good shape uh, for the next episode. My expectation is I'll continue to try to breed the cows and we'll be able to make probably at least a couple of bookshelves and perhaps put some low-level enchants on my armor, maybe make some better pants, and then we'll do some serious caving and hopefully we'll be able to find some more diamonds and perhaps find our first dungeon in this world, maybe even find that saddle. So look forward to that. I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and I will see you again soon with more Minecraft Exploration and Tactics Space Bard. Bye-bye.